Look out. Footy's back. G'day. I'm Essendon legend Dean Wallace. Wait, no, I'm not. I'm James Clements. This is the AFL Today Show, your new favourite one-stop shop for all things AFL footy, the greatest game in the world. Joining me for this round 15 rap show is the one, the only, fresh out of Geelong. The stats boy, Liam McCallie. What's going on, Liam? Oh, very excited. Uh, was pumped with North uh, last night. Some honourable losses. So as a North fan, I'm slightly happier than a couple of months ago. So that's always good. There is nothing sadder than the phrase, I'm pumped up for honourable <laughs> losses. <laughs> All right. This is the Round 15 wrap. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get around the AFL today on the uh, old socials as well. What was it? The Sports Today Show on Facey. Yep. But the cool thing is, footy's back, but not for too much longer. This is horrifying. Round 15, Stats Boy. What is going on? I do not like it. But we'll start this show the way we start every show here with a quick look. Hey, what happened in round 15? A lot. There was a lot going on. Might be over for the old Tomahawk there, Stats Boy. Oh, he looked horrible. I think he's been horrible all year, but he just looks off the pace, very slow. Your body, like, his thing was even in the ruck. He'd get it out of the ruck for those... uh, those forward entries and things like that. He's just lost his strength, his pace, everything. I think he's done. Yeah. Uh, so he copped an injury. Copped an injury as well. Yeah. That's kind of the vibe from the Friday night game. Mm. Geelong just had this moment of like, oh, are we good? We're just and old. <laughs> didn't look at that mm. like, at all. Like, the way the Tomahawk got injured sort of went off. Yeah. Like, yeah, that might be. It was brutal it. as well. Or mm. Hopefully it's not. At the same time, he's not been playing very well. No, that's what I was saying. He might not even get back in. Other quick looks. Hey, Stephen May. Oh, I hate Stephen May already. And the fact that he's, oh, he's just flopping everywhere. What are you doing, mate? Uh, I don't know. Don't say that too loudly. He might punch on with you. Well, I've, ne- I've never seen him before, so. <laughs> You're also not one of his teammates, so maybe exactly, you won't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ken Hinckley got booed as Port Adelaide got smashed at home against the Lions. I reckon he's gotten booed more than any other coach in history. Because every sec two years he gets booed, yeah. Ken Hinckley. So what are, just how is he still there? <laughs> It's also this like similar vibes with uh, so Geelong at the moment, you know, on a bit of a downswing. Mm. But even if they just have a bad year, you just expect somehow they'll be awesome in top four again yeah. next year. Like Port might be wooden spooners next year, and you'd be like, "Yeah, Port, that's right, that's how it goes." And Ken Hinckley will still have a job. He still like, have a job. Well, the Port will probably somehow go on a run. This is what they do every year. They'll somehow go on a run, make finals, and then just lose straight out, straight out of finals. And then Ken will keep his job because like, oh, they finished the season strong because they made finals. So we'll see what happens. But. Nice one. <laughs> And the Gold Coast CEO wants a week of interstate finals to even up the MCG Grand Final, which I think is quite ironic because it's the Gold Coast CEO, and it's like make a final. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was going to say. I wrote this down for that exact reason. There's a guy that their team has never made finals in their whole history, and he's saying we wanted interstate finals week. Just shut up, mate. Your team is getting smashed. Well, not smashed at the moment, but they're going to lose to Frio. I believe what the phrase about? is uh, "cry more." Yeah. Uh, boo hoo hoo. Like, <laughs> seriously, for someone to be like, ah, oh, you yeah, look, it's really unfair having the grand final in Melbourne. It's like, you're not going to make You've it. not made the finals ever. <laughs> even if they do make the finals this year somehow, they're not making the grand finals. So, what is he even worried about? I love that. All right, let's do it. Ladder check, 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 check. I do like that we pulled the pin on this one early, and now uh, the Gold Coast Suns oh, what are the flying back to that boy. But I just said they were lost to Freya. So Ladder <laughs> check. Now, after this week, the buys are done, so we are at even standing across the Finally. board. Finally. It's just games beautiful. played. Literally since round zero, this has been wonky as all get out, and I've not enjoyed it. So who's on top, you might ask? The answer to that is the best team we've seen in the last 50 <laughs> years of AFL football. That's right. Wow. Aussie Rules footy is now dominated by the Sydney Swans. They look untouchable. They look incredible. The best team in the comp by far. They're 13-1. Yeah. and one. Carlton at 10-4. and four. In sole possession of second place. That's mainly because, I don't know, Collingwood didn't play this week, but that's fine. Also, Carlton Carlton looked very good. Carlton looked awesome. I was there. They were up and about. Charlie Curno, watching him live is one of the best things to watch in footy. The Bomb Rays are third. Essendon at 9-4-1 and after a big win over the uh, Eagles. When I say big, I mean... Not massive. They just sort of got over the line. They finished strong. Collingwood 8-4-2 having had the bye. GWS... Eight and six, somehow still in fifth. What the hell? So many crap teams are in the eighth. Uh, the tricky part is, I believe G- if Frio hold on to win this, uh, Frio will jump from 10th to 5th. Yes. Which tells you a lot about the Wait, state really? of the current AFL ladder, where the team that is in 10th with one single win can go, <laughs> hang on a second, now we're fifth. Yeah, literally, you'd be like, one week, you're like, oh, we're in 10th. We're not, we're not, we're not good. We're not going to make fun. Oh, wait, we're fifth. We can go for top four. <laughs> that's what called being a Melbourne supporter. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, I think 
what, earlier this week, they were languishing in 11th. Yep. And like, now they're 8th. It's like, we're in the finals. Yeah, let's see, we're back. <laughs> All seven of their supporters will be up and about. Oh, they don't turn That up was anymore. a shocking game on Saturday, but we'll get to that later. Yes. Geelong 8 and 6 as well as the Port Adelaide Power as well as the Melbourne Demons. 6 through 8 are all in 8 and 6. Then you have the Brisbane Lions, the rampant Lions. They're coming. They're coming. 7, 6 and 1. Uh, Frio presumably will be 7, 6 and 1 after this. Uh, but they will jump up because obviously they have – oh, no, they'll be 8, 6, and 1, sorry, of course. They'll jump up into 5th on 34 points. Unless Gold Coast snatch a win here. If but, Gold Coast so it could be close. Three goals three in the goals. next five minutes. It could be chaos. Well, Matthew's rule says it's still life. I'll tell you. Uh, so Frio, boom, off they go. The Bulldogs – I still- love that there's still the line of demarcation <laughs> even with the bye. Well, they had a bye. So seven and seven. seven and Nothing's seven. changed. It's great. The line of demarcation team. They should call themselves the Western line of demarcation. That just rolls off the tongue really well. You can get some chance going with that. Surely. I'm going to make up a team. Just I just start calling them that and everyone just go, oh, I thought that was just their name. Simple Maybe, as that. Yeah, yeah. The Western or 500s. The, the Western, yeah, yeah, the 50-50s. <laughs> uh, Gold Coast, seven and six at the moment. This looks like it'll be seven and seven in a second, which would tie them with the Hawthorne Hawks in mm. 13th. St Kilda, five and nine. I love that St Kilda had the bye this week, and everyone's like, oh, I did not notice. Because no one wants to watch the St Kilda no game. It was, it's beautiful game. when the Saints have a bye. Can we give the Saints the bye the rest of the year? <laughs> I think Saints fans might say the same. They're like, Can we just take it off? <laughs> Adelaide, oh boy, four nine and one as well. Uh, West Coast, play the drop. They're three <laughs> eleven. Oh yeah, woo! NBA Australia reference. What a great, great, great band. Uh, <laughs> Richmond two and twelve, and your beloved North Melbourne one and thirteen. Stats boy. Yeah. Uh, is there a column though but for yeah, honourable losses? I was literally about to say that. I think there should be HLs because we've got what have we got? Two or three now? Two or three? Yeah. Two point five. Yeah. Nice we one. should get a get a point for that. I love that. Uh, the biggest ones though, I think. If we before we get into uh, the vent session, the fraud watch, that's kind of almost what this is, right? This ladder at the moment. We're sort of seeing like a hint of separation, I guess. Like top two, obviously, from the standing top two. there. Oh, yeah. But basically almost from the top four because you go, you have the Swans, Carlton, Essendon, and Collingwood. They do – they're obviously literally a game up on everybody. Mm. But there is at least a quality to those four teams that I feel like – we've talked about this before, right? Yeah. Like those four teams can probably beat best. most of the other teams below them – well, Probably. I was going to talk about that later, possibly, but I can Essendon. bring it up now about Essendon. Yep. The fact Essendon that they're third, uh, yeah, it's just is very worry, worrisome. They've only been in one team in the top eleven, Four. and they're third. So and how does that work? That's chaos. Yeah. Fraud Adelaide as well in seventh, uh, soon to be eighth as they get jumped. By yeah, they're, they're making finals. I don't think. Let's do that. Let's get into Vences. Fraud Adelaide is just still like the funniest thing. I. <laughs> It is, I, I, I'm glad I'm not a Port fan. I'd be so frustrated right now. So I've got two thing. little things here for uh, Vin Sesh for this week. Yes. Booing Ken Hinckley. Yeah, nah. I don't think you should boo your own team. That's my opinion on any sport. I'm a Boston Celtics fan. I've got this on, and they love to do that when they have a few losses. But no, nah, I don't think you should boo your own team ever. You can boo other things. But. I find that, like, but you have a sense of excellence about the Celtics, right? That's They, they yeah. hold them to a high To be standard. fair, Celtics the funnier, have won the most championships. The funnier yeah. aspect is that when the Philadelphia 76ers boo their yes, own team. and they don't win anything. And yeah. so you've not won anything since <laughs> yeah. 1983. Yeah. Well, same as but Port, you could say the same thing. Port, same, they don't but win anything. Haven't, haven't won since, what, 04? Yes. Uh, like but the point being, like, <clears throat> them booing Ken Hinckley, servant of the club, it's like, yeah, it's tough, but they've just looked so, and I don't like using this word, but they've looked insipid. And sip it. And just like, you don't like that one? rubbish. Anyway, we'll talk about them again <laughs> later. The other one is a bit of fraud watch. Uh, so I mentioned Stephen May. Mm. Oh. Slings his head into the ground. Li- he's going to get Slings his fine. own head into the ground. Slings his own head into the ground. Should get an Oscar for that performance. Absolute joke. So just what I on. hated about this is not only that Stephen May did that, but the night before, Brian Taylor, Ooh, the wow. esteemed BT, bristle himself. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, stats boy, wow, wee! <laughs> Sam guy. Walsh just threw his own head into the ground. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that. He threw his own head into the ground. <laughs> no, he, he got tackled and his head hit the ground. Exactly. Like, what are fine. we doing his here? This was fine. This is like, there's a lot of uh, chatter out there, basically going, oh, he, he definitely, like, you know, made it look worse than it was. Like, no, he, he, the he momentum was that way. His yeah. arms are pinned. Yeah. What is he meant to do? Yeah. This is ridiculous. There is a lot of players doing it, though, which is annoying me so much, and this is the first one that's being so called out on it. This uh, is Stephen my, May, not Sam This Walsh. is my point. The fact that Stephen May then, the very next day, actually did it makes it 
like we could have had a clear runway of just yelling at BT yeah. for going, oh, he bashes his head against the ground on purpose. It's like that's an insane statement to say. And then Stephen May comes actually out. Actually does it, yeah. And did it. Oh, I can't stand so it. There's actually a few Stephen players May. been doing it this year and it's, it's so dumb. They're, they're going to hurt themselves. They're going to hurt players. Oh, anyway, that's a, that's a whole uh, whole other argument. And to continue the BT thread just for a second, uh, he's getting shouted down on the internet. Like, not that he cares. No, uh, there's a petition, isn't there? There is a petition <laughs> yes. for Channel 7 to just get him off the air. Yeah. Like, many would say about time. Oh, he used to be and awesome. Look, He's dropped off here. Yeah. I'm right here, Stats Guy. I will put my hand up to oh. be the lead commentator. Do you have to be like BT? I will, I'll, I've got the beard. It's <laughs> yeah. a bit bristly. I didn't oil it today, so she's a bit ragged. Uh, but I think my biggest problem with this was Watching that game on Friday night. So you were at it. Yes, yeah, so I didn't home, hear the commentary that much. A yeah. few tins deep. Mm -hmm. And you're like, couldn't you just, I don't know, you're the lead caller for a game. You could at least sound barely interested in yeah. it. Yeah. He sometimes it was just a, goes on tangents. But Friday night, you don't need that. You don't need, it was not even the tangents. It's quite literally just like the, you sound bored. Yeah. It's like, this is a really good game. Carlton are like playing awesomely. He just did it around. quite literally like weeks ago when Sydney were just demolishing teams. It was really just excited like, from Sydney, yeah. What is happening? Hmm. What is happening? I feel like your lead caller should be trying to sell your game, not just be like, ah, ah how good is my job? Like, yeah, Shut yeah up how good am I? Yeah. Anyway, good stuff. <laughs> Let's do some game raps. Hey, Friday was good, stats boy. Yeah, if your team's putting up 138 points on the Cats, you're, that's a good night right there. 21 goals, 12, uh, with 12 <laughs> different goal kickers. Awesome. Very nice. Charlie kicked five, and we still had 21 different goal kickers. Sorry, 12. <laughs> no, tw 21, 21 goals. different goal kickers. Jeez. That would be pretty good. <laughs> hey, you get a goal. You, you get, get a goal. goal. <laughs> Jim, come down here. You get a goal. That, okay. that one night, Jim did the scores, and Carlton it. scored 272 <laughs> points. Hey, Dom AFL had. record. <laughs> but 21, 12, 138 to 11 goals, 970. Uh, the best full Carlton game of the year because they've yes, had like these moments agree, where they yeah. look that good but mm -hmm. it's for a quarter and a half it's yep. like when they beat GWS uh, when they beat the Suns heads in Suns. Uh, at Marvel mm -hmm. weirdly enough it had, like against Essendon as well like a lot of that game like they sort of kept them at arm's length but it was still but it was still a contest yeah. and like they just kicked Geelong's head in yeah the whole way through. Like you yeah. were just walking down a street in Carayo and got jumped. I had a mate's dad that we uh, were with. He left at halftime. He was filthy Geelong supporter. That's I, I don't think anyone should ever be leaving at halftime, but <laughs> that's a bit of a joke. That is a bit but, of a joke. But, uh, yeah, Geelong fans were not happy at the G. Uh, Tom DeConing. Now he's the best DeConing. Oh, yeah. He, they can he, only be there can be only one. He it's Highlander. Him. They'll get another They the look fight. like Highlander. I think we should give him a sword. Yeah, why not? I'm pretty sure that's how it works. <laughs> but I love a bit of brother on brother biffo, because I have three Starting younger brothers together. who are all bigger than I am. <laughs> and so now they can bash me. Like it's it's obviously not very hard. I'm old, I'm decrepit, but at the same time, <laughs> Tom DeConing and Sam DeConing going at it and just like the awesome. back and forth, just the absolute biff. That was unreal. And TD, TDK had the highest rated game of the year. Unbelievable. Of any player. Huge super coach score. That was unreal. I love you, TDK. Apparently, he wasn't just getting into him because it's like brother and brother. He was in Geelong during the week and uh, Sam didn't invite him over for dinner and he wasn't happy. He said, you're a, you're a crap brother. I was almost going to swear that. You're a crap brother. You didn't invite me to dinner. I'm going get to get into you on the weekend. And he's, and that's why he got into him. Apparently. I invited my three younger brothers to come bowling with me on the weekend. There you go. And none you of them came. So oh, I'm going oh, to bash every single one of them. The thing is, <laughs> that they all, did not go where I they all still love, live in Ballarat though. So <laughs> I'm like, it was basically, oh yeah, if you guys want to come, don't come. I'm is there already, a bowling? I'm already is there some, are you going to go bowling in Ballarat? We, I did go bowling in Ballarat last year for my birthday. It was great go. fun. Sounds like a TV show. One million TV bowling beers as well. A uh, couple of other things. Obviously, Charlie kicked five, but it was everyone else booting snags. It was Always the, was awesome. Always was fantastic. Yeah. But I think when Harry Mackay kicks straight for just like gets two snags early, you're like, oh, yes. I thought Harry McFly was on. <laughs> I think he kicked his like, what, the second one was like maybe in the third quarter. You're like, yeah. they're going to win this game now. Like Because he's kicking fine. straight. He's yeah. kicking straight. And mm -hmm. that's like... They turn into a different team, like just in terms of confidence once he's actually kicking straight. Yep. Uh, and outside of that, there was the weird – like if Carlton had of like – if this had been closer, this would be a much bigger thing. The Jeremy Cameron goal, Stats Boy. Yeah, that shouldn't have been a goal. So Mitch McGovern is standing there. That was a joke. This is the line, and Jeremy Cameron's like two metres that way. After the siren, when After the you siren. have to stay on your line. You have to stay on the line. Like I see it all the time go. in playing local footy, but in, you've got the umpire standing right there. I don't know what was going on with that. How the how the hell they? Uh, oh, you can have happen. a natural arc. It's like you, but you can't arc, just no, go. You can't, in, you can't go off there after no, the siren. After what the, are we doing? Here? You can in if it's a normal kick, but not after the siren. Ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but again, I think the biggest thing. So we always do. How do the two fan bases yes. feel after this game? Uh, for the cats, 
I think their fans are going to be like, why do we look so old and slow? Look so slow, yeah. Yeah. Like Ollie Dempsey, when he gets the ball, electric. Love that. Mm-hmm. Brian Myers, electric. But he's not exactly like, hey, let me just shred up the no. wing and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. It's like, I don't know which Guthrie's good week to week. You're like, come on. <laughs> well, one of them's injured. <laughs> exactly. One of them's not playing. And you're like, are you the are good you, one or the, the bad one? No, Zach's no been one good. knows. <laughs> Zach's been good this year. Zach's like, I don't even know, Jim. Settle down, bro. <laughs> I don't even know which one I am. Tom uh, Stewart's being tagged out of the competition. He's going to have to retire at the end of the season. Like, it's all chaos. Mm. Like, now, Carlton fans will be very happy. Top two, they know that they are like closer to Sydney than any, not just because of the ladder. You've got a big drop off after Carlton on the ladder. Carlton fans would also be stoked on the other guys. So this is yes. a big, big NBA, is awesome, but big the NBA other term, right? Like the other guys. I hate it because it sort of sells short role players, but it's true though. It's the, you can always talk about how like, oh, what, like the quality of a team is like, how good their worst four yeah. players are and that's stuff every, like that. That's right? every team. In every sport, I reckon. Yeah. But really, it's kind of like for Carlton, you're like, we know that Cripps is awesome. 41 touches. Yep. Sam Walsh, another 33 or whatever it was. Fantastic. <clears throat> Charlie, Harry. But it's the likes up the back of Weeders, yep. of McGovern, of Saad. When they're playing fantastic, they looked unreal. Mm-hmm. Brody Kemp turned himself into a player. But then in the middle, it's like this game, Hewitt dominated. Kennedy, Kennedy dominated. He was dominated. good, yeah, yeah. They were both fantastic. And this team's still got Chair and Cottrell and stuff to come back in, so I don't know. <laughs> this is the most positive I've ever seen you about Carlton. Well, they because they because they looked amazing. They looked yeah. awesome. Yeah. So we'll take there that. There you go. Hey, Saturday, there's a team that didn't look very good. Port oh. Adelaide, 73. Brisbane, 152. 23 they, goals, 14 stats, boy. That the is Lions. ridiculous, the amount of shots they've had there. What is it? Up 37 back. scoring shots. That is you get everyone get a goal. Actually, everyone get a scoring shot because there was a few misses, obviously, but... The Lions are back. Oh, they people, started slowly as well. I know. It was chaos. <laughs> like they were basically, Ru, Rusciuto was basically banging on about the simple fact, oh yeah, boys, it's a little lot of four and 50, like seven times, and they got like three scores. And you're like, Rusciuto, left the pins before you Genuinely a good impression. <laughs> don't drink before you think. What are you doing? <laughs> he was like, oh, you're not my mum, Jim, shut drink. up. <laughs> I think that's just how he talks. Uh, but anyway, look, they looked... Directionless, I think, was the big thing I used for power. Well, like, well, there was so much good insight there, yeah. back and forth, faffing about yes. is another technical yes. term that I enjoy using. <laughs> technical term. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so much faffing. It's like watching them play football is like someone farting in an elevator. You're like, oh, this is <laughs> – I don't like this at all. Get me out of here. Well, Right, like it's – You've got the big forwards and the lines, but the way that Port were attacking, it just never felt coherent. Bomb it every time. Oh. There was no plan. It nah. felt like it was just gross. Like between Butters, Rosie, uh, Horn Francis had like over twenty touches. Houston had over twenty touches, but it felt like Hornet was like butchering it every time yeah. he touched it. He kicked zero goals three. Yep. Uh, Houston wasn't as impactful as you would rather think. And you think about as I just mentioned <clears> with Carlton, those other guys. Who are those other guys oh, for Port? Like, I'm it's like, to, I'm is it Bergman? Like who? Bergman's been good, but he's, he's not. He's been fine. But yeah, he's like, okay. Georgi yeah. Artis has been really good, but yep. like Finlayson stinks. Yep. And you're like, so Charlie that's only cooked. with six touches. I know he's a backman, but you need to get some more intercept marks and things like that. It's not looking good. I reckon on the whiteboard, Ken just writes, Rosie Butters, yeah, do everything. Do everything. Just uh, puts an arrow to where they're kicking and Wines then they just go out there. wildly <laughs> unimpactful as well. Yep. But like you look at their, in, their entire thing this offseason, right? It was like, oh, we'll recruit like just handy footballers. Zerk Thatcher, mm. Soldo, uh, yeah. Radigalia. Uh, which made them look better, but this hasn't jolled at all. It's also like, yeah, those are also still very meh names. Like, yeah. it's, it's especially meant to like radical, raise. Yeah. It's meant to raise your floor. Yes, and it has not done that. It's at just all. the same. Yeah, yeah. Still, the lines looked amazing though. The lines looked incredible, and it might be just like we're putting the boot into port maybe a little bit too early. But that no, might I don't be think just so. like three straight losses. They just look bad. Like so at I home, don't I don't. I wouldn't have mind if they lost to Brisbane because Brisbane at their best should be top four because yep. they, they were in the grand final last year. But the fact that they lost by 79 at home when you're supposed to be a finals team, that is an absolute joke. That's you, know, a joke. Like, you know how cool it is to see games at the Adelaide Oval. Like, it's great. It's the best venue. You yeah. just go, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I should be having fun. <laughs> well, you have to get more of those mega pints and then they'll, otherwise, what's the point of going there? Imperial pints. Yeah, it's never just change great. Adelaide. <laughs> uh, but the Lions, they rode the big forwards. Joey Duckett's, oh, he was very handy. Eric. And then Hipple went, that's cute. Check this out. Five more. Five, yeah. Bang on your head. Awesome. He's in a purple patch. I also love that they're basically just going, all right, you'd be really awesome this week. 
Yeah, we'll switch it and up. We'll like, switch oh, it up. Yeah. I'll be really good next week. It's like, <laughs> off we go. And they just sort of change it. But for me, it's like Brucey Reveal and like Logan Morris depth. and stuff yeah. like that. Talk yeah. about the depth. Like, this is a team. I was trying to explain it the other day, right? It was like they had so many injuries early on in the season. It sort of felt like it completely just turned their structures inside out. And they're like, what do we do? Mm. How do we do this? And and half, it's sort of worked They've now. slowly just mm. figured it out. And it's like, wait a minute. Putting Zorko half. Z- Z- oh, sorry, Zorko. Zorko half back. I've got my words out there. So Zorko at half back. Yep. Like these, like Dunkley's getting way more of the ball. Neil has gotten back to his best. Neil was awesome, yeah. Neil was incredible in this game. 37, yeah. Also an interesting decision to go, geez, you know what worked last time Neil played was to tag him. No, nah, we won't do that nah, again. <laughs> what sort of idiot would do that? Yeah, that job, the tag probably. is back, and uh, Ken obviously hasn't got the message yet. But the Lions look fantastic. Great mm-hmm. game by them. How are the two fan bases feeling after this? Port, they're just going to go walk into the River Torrens and just, like, I'm done. <laughs> Get the, uh, is the uh, zip line still there? Just, yeah, just jump <laughs> off the zip line straight into the Torrens. Just keep the zip line down. Just back and forth. Just back and forth. <laughs> oh, this is the only way I could feel anything. Mate, can you, have, can you be sad on a zip line? I don't know. I don't think so. No. <laughs> Brisbane fans will be up and about. They're going to be like, yes, this is, where was this for like the first oh, half of the they're season? They're finally back. And finally. they look incredible again. They, they, I think, guess the next step for Brisbane is just like Gabatois. Yes, they need to get that fortress going. Get that vibe back. Don't Mm -hmm. lose there again for the rest of the season. And you are laughing. Yep. Because if you look at like Brisbane's, uh, so what are they? They were in ninth. They were in ninth. They've been jumped by Frio. So they probably ducked it back down. But they're right in the finals hunt now. But they play the Demons next week at home. They play Adelaide up there as well. Then they play in what will be one of the biggest games of the season. The Sydney Swans on July Ooh. 21 at the Gabatois. You win that game. I think Alex is going to that. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That would be great. Uh, outside of that, they've got GWS up there, Essendon North. Oh, they want to be North. Yeah. There <laughs> nah, we go. Nah, nah. I'm just joking. Brisbane. I guess you could say I'm back. There was a battle of the bridge as well on Saturday. Yeah, did, 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 oh, oh my god, I'm all over the shop. Did Good GWS speaking. know that the Battle of the Bridge was actually on? Because they didn't turn up. They didn't show up early. <laughs> Although early, yeah. They kicked eight of the last ten goals. They were down 58, I think it was. Yep. What is going on Shambles. with GWS? Oh, again, they're another team on paper. A lot, like, look a lot better than Port Adelaide. They started the season off so strongly, exactly the same as Geelong. They couldn't lose. And now they just cooked. They just, I don't know what's going on there. So we sent our intrepid reporter, Alex Donnelly, to this game. When <laughs> we I sent say, him there. Yeah. When I say we sent him, I say he just went. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, we sent him. And he's like, I need to speak. And we're like, we don't care. Like, <laughs> your team is the best team in the competition. It's the best team in the AFL, yep. in the history of the AFL. We get it. He's like, all right, Finn Callahan's handsome. And also, Row Bottom's awesome. <laughs> Well, yeah, Ro- okay. he got, Alex actually got a shout out on the Sydney Swans official page, which is pretty cool on the uh, on Twitter. That's pretty cool. Very nice. But his point, I think, is that Robottom finally got a Brownlow vote in this game. Finally. He, he, he reckons. Yeah. Oh. He reckons. I want to see him. Does the umpires know who Robottom is, though? Do the umpires know who Alex is? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, yes, they do, because they can hear him in the yeah, crowd. I was going to say, if they've met him, they're like, oh, I just want this guy to shut up. <laughs> Jeez. Just no, give, Robottom give him a was vote awesome. to shut him up. Oh, God. <laughs> Um, Robottom was awesome though he's pressure he just does a bit of everything I, I do like him so did they make clear of the sub in this game as well uh, I actually need to have because a look because that happened I, in the Melbourne game as uh, well, which is uh, not great I'm not sure to be but honest but Alex's other points from this game that NG is very very fun it sucks to get to yes he was clear but it rules as a stadium I think he was angry about something but ang- like this is the thing so the, my secret is I'm always angry Alex is like shut up, I'm the angriest. And you're like, yeah, that's all right. So there's something about the music. And he's like, oh, I'm just angry. It's like they're playing Thunderstruck. It's like, I have thoughts about music. Thunderstruck's fine. It's Aussie. Thunderstruck. Yeah, it's Aussie. I don't care. Like, yeah, that's just great the greatest song. pump up music exactly. of all time. So I would prefer Shoot the Thriller. That's an absolute banger that kind of gets overlooked until I think they used it in Iron Man 2 or something. Like, they did. That was and fantastic. Then it, yeah, that was great. And everyone realized just how good that was. Anyway, so the rest of this game, the Swans. It was pouring, and the Swans getting over 100 again is a good effort in the in the wet. 15-12, so 102 to 75. Yep. You're like, oh, 27-point game. It must have been close. It was not No, close. no, not, it was not at close. all. Not at all. Uh, Errol Gordon. Whoa, Errol, you kicked a goal and had 41. Like, what a game. <laughs> Why did that work so well? Was it, was it actually? I don't know if he kicked a goal. I'm just saying. That. Uh, I think he did. He had he? 10 scoring moments, so surely one of them was a goal. Let's have, have some. You'd hope so, because I just nailed that. Now yeah. I've talked myself. Well, whatever. Oh, he might not have. <laughs> Let's have a quick look. Grew kicked two goals, by the way. <laughs> Despicable Me oh, was he the, comes out he was and, a, and Grew plays at the same time. He was the debutant this week. Yes, yes. for uh, yeah for GWS. Yeah. yeah he nice was one. great. Grew. I don't, uh, oh, he did kick a goal. There you go. Love you, it. You, I nailed it then. You, your song is just perfect. No, I'll never <laughs> doubt myself again. 
Uh, Robottom had 20 possess- uh, contested possessions and 10 score involvements. You love to see that. It's pretty good. Yeah. Probably Underrated. Did, I'll agree with Alex on this probably one. Probably did get a uh, Brownlow vote in I there. don't know. I don't, there's a lot of good players in this But game. I think the biggest thing, so we talked about Carlton having 12 different goal scorers. I think the Swans had kicked 15 goals and had 11. Wow. Which is absurd. Is so crazy. there's a couple of for no, Chad. Marty Party. Chad, Papley, McLean, and Will Hayward all kicked two. Everybody else got around the goals as well. Hmm. Um, nice. Somehow, a Marty Party did not happen. A did Marty he even Party, kick one? He kicked zero goals, one. He didn't even kick one after kicking nine. That is, come on, mate. I predicted him to kick 20. In, or has he gone, I've kicked nine, so I don't have to kick any for the next five, five weeks. Is that what he's thinking? GWS. What do we do? Oh. If you're a fan of GWS. Maybe just switch everyone's positions. If you're a fan of GWS, <laughs> the GWS, Greater Western Sydney Giants, it was a big, big sound. It's now much more of a whimper. Like they yep. beat Port last week, but that doesn't feel like big chops at all. Yeah. They lost to Hawthorne the week prior. They beat Geelong in Geelong that week uh, at the end of May. Cool. Just so up and down. They play Adelaide in Adelaide next week. It all, I think it, oh, they, that's oh, a fraud ball if I ever, that like is, they have yeah, to win that. They have or it's to like, win that. Packer up, boys, you're done. Like, I think it's just, it still comes down to the offense. I know they ended up kicking 75. That's still not. They need to be back to the start of the season where the first five weeks they were kicking 100 plus. There was also Hogan that, uh, was everywhere. So speaking of the Hogan, the Hogan goal where it's like the uh, deliberate out of bound, like over yeah. there and the Hogan gets like lined up randomly but kicks it anyway. Yes. Just another one of the umpires this week. So according to the Jeremy Cameron one as well, I think by the letter of the law, the Hogan one was okay. But at the yeah. same time, like the Jeremy Cameron, like just why little do we have rules four that are umps now? Yeah. Like we still just don't get basic stuff right. Anyway. I agree. Sydney, how are their fans – Feeling? Oh, same as the last I 10 think, weeks. <laughs> well, if I just about. check my watch now, my like, Alex is like hammered. So yeah. that's that's about it. I think they should get home. he's had like two beers and he's off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, but Swans fans will be stoked. They look incredible. They win a Sydney derby, uh, the Battle of the Bridge. Yes. Never basically broke a sweat. No, nah, they did, like. did it so Even easily. when JWS was sort of coming hard at him, it's like, we're, we're fine. Like, ah, we're good. <laughs> yeah. Like, whatever, we, dudes. It's just ending. <laughs> nice one. Saturday night. It's all right for fighting. Also... I don't know. Good if you wanted a Melbourne Demons win. Oh. 70 to 67 over your North Melbourne brethren. The stats boy. Oh. Ruse, take us through this game. Very, very scrappy. Uh, there just wasn't many goals at all in the first half. I think it was 40 to 25. The Demons fans, I've said this for probably the last couple of years, unless Melbourne are winning, they do not turn up. And it frustrates me so much. They're at, they're going at their ski chalets and uh, having their cheese boards down there, I think, because no one was at the G. It was... It is cold, all right, but that's every year the footy's cold. Just put your beanie on. It was the breast it's, cancer awareness that, beanies were around, so they, chuck one of your beanies they on. They play football in winter. Yeah, well, Melbourne don't know that because they don't they don't like turning up. Uh, North, very average first half, but just tried to uh, lock it down defensively. That's why the game was really scrappy. They had Phillips tagging Oliver, which wasn't good for uh, your super coach good. team. Yep. Obviously, Oliver only got 30-something, only 14 touches. Phillips literally couldn't get in the team, and now he's been an awesome tagger. So the first move Clarko's done, where I'm like, oh, He's master actually made a good coach. Move. Now he's a master, master coach. Master coach. Now he's a master it coach. It only took him a year and a half to like come up with something master coach. Yeah. But then then uh, even this Cherry versus Gorn matchup was awesome. You yeah. got two of the best Ruckman going head to head. Uh, I'm just so worried about the D's fitness. This, uh, North kicks the last six goals of the game in the last 45 minutes. Almost got, got over the line. Oliver looks on fit. So they just couldn't run. They couldn't keep up with LDU, Shees and things like that. I hate to say this that we because we lost by three points and they got over the line. But it was like a mini win for North, and that's a that was like a loss for the Demons because they should be beating us by at so least six straight goals to zero points. at the end. Yeah, the last forty five minutes they didn't even score Ridiculous. a goal. Ridiculous. Yeah, it was uh, unbelievable. I don't know. I feel like this is the problem for when you send away your fitness guru, uh, Joel Smith. I mean, I, the, I, there was I'm a Motley Crue song, Stats Boy, Doctor Feelgood. I'm just saying, maybe Joel Smith might have been that guy. I don't know. <laughs> what possibly. are we doing? Possibly. You keep him away from the team. Look what happens. The wheels. They're off. They're off. Clayton Oliver's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> yeah, he's, he what do off. I do? Oh, How do so I hard. play football? I love that people are like, oh, he didn't have a preseason, man. It's round 15. I know. He, Clayton Oliver, you're, you're a professional cook, athlete. Mate. Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah, people were saying that during the game. They're like, oh, yeah, he just still looks a bit unfit. The season's almost done and you're still unfit. That's that's just makes not no good sense. At all. Yeah, Aldi U was awesome. He had 31 and a goal. Sheasel had 27 and two goals. Uh, I'm trying to see the goal kickers for Melbourne. There wasn't, it wasn't a good game. <laughs> I'm being very biased like North, like, even yeah, though Melbourne won. <laughs> we're looking for the goal kickers for Melbourne. It's like, yeah, it, there's not they that were many. as well. Yeah. So. And Larky actually didn't Daniel even Turner get a goal. Daniel Turner kicked two. Yeah, Disco, they call him. Disco Turner. Rue was, Roo was Ben Royan kicked one. Sparrow yep. kicked one. Trent Rivers, Cozzy, Petty, 
A and B, Tommy McDonald and Max Mc, or really is. need a guy that they can guarantee two or three goals every well, week, which they don't have. Bailey yeah. Fridge, but he. Well, actually, that was another one. Jackson Archer uh, shot him down. That was probably his best ever game, Jackson Archer, and people North fans are very happy about that. Christian Salem went off with an, a seeming injury at some point yeah. as well, which is just horrible. If like the demons are going, what are we doing? Yeah, we're just kind of injuries and everyone's sad. <laughs> That's pretty much the uh, demons at the moment. Still, if uh, you know. If you want to make like loud, annoying statements, they're not going to play finals. Definitely like, not. Okay. <laughs> if they do, I don't know. If can they turn this around? That's I just think I've just, said definitely not to so many teams playing finals. So maybe Melbourne still can, but I just don't trust oh, don't their pop so. gun offense. Right? Like it's oh, been yeah. horrible. They it's just only can't been kick scores. They kicked seventy on North Melbourne this week. Yeah. They scored fifty-one against the Pies, forty-nine horrible. against the Dockers. There was that random game where they scored 100 on St Kilda, but outside of that, 70 against the Eagles, 76 against Carlton, 74 against Geelong, like 85 against Richmond back in April, 60 prior to that. They've, what, top 78 like three times all season. That's horrible. Maybe they need to bring back some old players. What was it? Brad Green used to kick a few snacks. I don't know why. Gary Lyon. Gary Lyon, bring him back. How do the two fan bases feel about these ones? Well, the Demons are just like, ha, we got to win. Wait, did we play this week? Oh, yeah, they didn't turn up, so they maybe they didn't. Was it 28,000 there? Oh, I don't even know what it was, but it looked like hardly anyone. And how are North fans feeling, Stats Boy? Oh, look, a lot more positive. Last three weeks, I've been, we've, been consistently okay, so I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, we have been so consistently bad to go sure. and have some show something. All the young guys stepping up uh, as a North fan, I'm pretty happy. It's just like West Coast because they lost to Essendon today, but they still scored 92 points, which is kind of it was cool. a fun game. Yeah, 122 to 92. Uh, the Bombers kicked away at the end, they survived a bit of a scare. Jakey Stringer kicked five, then went MIA when it mattered late. Yes, but then you know they steadied and they were fine. So, uh, why was that? Zach Merritt's awesome. Yeah, and Durham. I love But so watching. is Sam Durham. I love watching And Jai Colwell. Yes. They rule. When Colwell is is fit, he's an absolute jet. He just had so many injuries in his career. Caddy came in for Goldie at the last minute as well. It's like, that's not a like-for-like like replacement, but I kind of like it. He kicked a really cool snag from the uh, the boundary, great. a massive snap, yeah. What was it his second game? He's kicked two yeah, goals in that one? Yeah. Uh, Durham was incredible, though. 29 disposals, five clearances and a goal. Not bad. Coldwell was really impressive. Zeret had 29 and a goal and gave up one to Dyson Heppel right at the end as well. Yep. Very nice. Uh, the Bombers, with Ridley back, Martin back, well, Martin's been playing the inside side, but quite literally in the back line. When they get their run and carry going, you're like, cool, but they looked weirdly disorganized against this Eagles team early. They were down in this game early. Yeah. You're like, here we go. I was hoping. How I is this going to happen to the best team in the AFL? <laughs> There's how many team, best teams in the AFL there? Well, it goes Sydney, <laughs> Essendon, Collingwood, <laughs> Where's Carlton? They're horrible. <laughs> <It's insane. laughs> uh, Oscar Allen came back and kicked his uh, mandatory two, two plus. plus. He, he heard us. He watched the podcast and he goes, boys, I'm back. Two Oscar plus Allen guys. loves AFL today. He's like, boys, I got you. Yeah. Uh, full name, Oscar Allen, two, two plus, plus goals. Yep. Uh, yo, yo. It was, was very good. Mm-hmm. Cripps was very, very, very handy as well. Yep. Uh, but they, without Harley, like to be honest, for them to put up this much of a fight and scare the pants off of Essendon yeah. without Harley Reid, and Tim Kelly was pretty impressive, I yeah. thought. Yeah, I agree. With that. They had, like, just not quite enough, like, between, like, McGovern down back, uh, their wings, it, they do give up possession way too easy, I feel. They just got a few, it like, comes down to the depth part. You've got Essendon who have a lot more depth than West Coast. That's why West Coast are on top, bottom three in the ladder. And that's, yeah, that's the only reason that's what it came down to, I think. And, and Essendon mids kicking goals. That's yes. why they're third. I think I said this the other week. Every one of their mids has just been kicking goals every week. Merritt's kicking a goal every week. Coldwell's obviously coming to the side now and doing really well, so it's working well. Uh, now Ben Mackay has more wins in 14 games with Essendon than in six years at North Melbourne. I knew that one. I was hoping it didn't get brought up, but yeah, sad times. Good for Ben. I like, I like Ben Mackay, but, yeah, he's still but the not worst for North. Brother. <laughs> the worst brother. Yeah, he definitely, he definitely is. <laughs> How do the two fan bases feel about this? Essendon relief more than anything. Relief. Like they Because they nearly coughed up. A game against West Coast earlier this year, you might remember. Yes. Uh, held on to win that. Six points, yeah. And then it looked like history was going to repeat itself. Like West Coast, we know, have been horrible on the road. Yeah, this is their best. That's probably their best One game they've been showing, on the road. Right? They yeah. got absolutely belted from pillar to post by Adelaide, what, yeah. like three weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, what the hell? Uh, and then they turn around and put up a really good fight against this. And so you'll be like, this is what we want to see. We Similar just want to see those younger dudes just play well. Yeah. But and I guess I'd still be a little bit worried, yep. but they're just laughing at, at third because they're like, we're not even that good, but we're third. <laughs> <laughs> so. And in my point of view, they're still the best team in the AFL, <laughs> okay. non-Sydney <Yeah>. division. <laughs> Finally, 
Frio, way to go. They went and did the old heave-ho on Gold Coast. They did. Because Gold Coast played below the 28th uh, degree latitude. They've done it again, <laughs> Gold Coast. Prove us wrong, Gold Prove Coast. Prove me wrong, Gold Coast. <laughs> Prove me wrong. 85-65. Tracy was fantastic. Love Jordan watching. Clark had that five-bounce possession like from just, the back half, yeah. which is fantastic. Uh, set up a goal to Brayshaw. When they're on at home, Frio are so fun to watch. It, it hasn't been, it's probably every three weeks that they're on. So we had Eliza Riley on during the week yes. uh, to chat Frio and West Coast. And we we're talking about the simple idea of like Frio at the best are like lockdown defense will score enough to win. Today it's just like, just check out these goals. Yeah. yeah. Here's a couple but, of goals. No, but she was spot on because 85 is not like a massive 65. score. It's not a massive And then number. they've only conceded 65. So defense wins. They were very, very good. I enjoyed this game immensely just because it was sort of, well, it was a bit of a slog in the first quarter. No, I thought it was a fun game. They got game, off to man. a pretty slow start. That's right. Um, Frio played a very fun brand of football essentially down the stretch. Yep. Uh, Gold Coast came at him a little bit hard late, but it wasn't enough. Uh, they steadied. My big problem is uh, Jaya miss. Oh, He's just it, gone completely jai uh, missing yeah, and yes. had two touches in this game. I think he's lacking confidence Sorry, six, or something. six touches, but yeah, kick zero goals too. And you're like, come on, man. He like, was their best forward last year. You got Tracy, now he's fired up. He's kicking two goals a game. Imagine you got Sturt Amos. was really good as well. Sturt was really good. So. The, if he fires up, their forward line's really good. You got Banfield kicking goals. Frederick's always good. We'll talk about like mids kicking goals. Yeah. That's what Frio sort of suddenly were doing as well, right? You talked about that with Essendon. That's exactly what yeah. Hayden Young did. He they chucked Hayden Young at full forward. I love, love that. Kick three snags. Yep. Uh, Caleb Sarong hit the scoreboard as well. Not a, you know, he gets amongst the goals. Yeah, here not there. every week though, yeah. Jaeger Ramirez kicked a goal. Yeah. You're like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Just get everyone's I don't know what year this is, but that's <laughs> radical. Andy Brayshaw <laughs> kicked one as well. Sean Darcy plugged one from like outside 50. Yep. Uh, the Suns, though, this is the problem. Like, they just can't do it away from home. No. Took Miller had 33 touches. Stupid Sexy Flanders had 33 touches. And they still There's a few nothing touches in there, yeah. A lot of nothing less, touches. Less Matty Rao with 23. It's like he doesn't like it away from the grass, the nice grass of people's yeah. first. Has he been is. eating grass lately? I don't know. Maybe, maybe he hasn't. Maybe he should eat more. Maybe. Or should he eat less? We don't know. Ma- have, yeah, imagine we just see him before the game. AFL today, sandwich. deep dive. How much grass is in your diet, Matt Rao? Right now. He's like, oh, I only had two spoonfuls this week. So <laughs> two spoonfuls. You either need to double it. Or cut it out entirely. Does he put it on his wheat picks like some people put strawberries, banana, or or anything? He just it puts says grass, grass shake. <laughs> grass shake. Yeah. Well, actually, the other one I was going to say. Leafy greens. <laughs> maybe. The other thing I was going to say was Gold Coast, uh, about away from home. They average 106 points when they're playing at home, obviously above the uh, 28 uh, latitude. But then they only average 58 points away. 58, almost half. That is I'm so gonna, bad. I'm just going to posit this for a second. If you <laughs> average 50 points less a game, yeah. On the road. You're never going to win. I think there might be a problem. Yeah. Just, just just, a thought I've had there. Like when they're at home, all their home fans, uh, when they go to the game, go, geez, we, we could be, this, this team should be top four. Yeah, if they just played at home, they'd be. They played top. every game in the Northern Territory and at home, they'd be unbeatable. They'd be, yeah, they wouldn't lose. Right. Fan bases. Frio, they're going to be looking at this going, just good. We know we're good. good. Yeah. <laughs> I think there was a point where, was it Schofield or someone was like saying on the call, Maybe Jared Healy. So oh, there's a premiership in this team. It's like, who is there? That's a big call. Like I think it's, it's really talented, but I want to see them just like if they. So what is this round fifteen? They're up to fifth, which we talked about before. That's it. Yeah, they play Sydney next week. Oh, well, in Sydney. Like, if they get it close to Sydney, if they somehow, however unfeasible it might seem, win that game, yeah, you're like. There, there, you're, the, you're the Leonardo DiCaprio meme. Uh, you're pointing yeah. at the TV. You're like, oh, what is oh, there we go. A bit of a- <laughs> they then play Richmond, Hawthorne, Melbourne, West Coast. They could win all four of those. Ooh. Essendon, Geelong, GWS. I did say Port. top four, but this is this is why Freo is annoying. Who do they lose to? They got smashed by the dogs last exactly. week. Exactly. So they just could also know. lose like a bunch of those games. Yeah. So I don't know. If you're a Freo fan, you look at this going, can we just yeah. finish out this season really strong? Try to like scooch past just like, some consistency, Essendon or Collingwood, even go top four, yeah, but just make the eight and we're yeah. happy. Uh, for Gold Coast fans, he's like, There was a game on. Well, like I said about Gold Coast fans, just don't watch a game that is away, yep, just only watch home games. All right, <laughs> tipping results really quickly. Oh, I, I think I went, I got oh, one apart right. from North, I yeah, I did everything. North yep. as well. I was like, This I'm a genius, so five <laughs> out of six, yeah, I think I got the same, yeah, North, you're killing me. <laughs> All right, full credit to the boys. Best team of round 15. The points go to a dominant Sydney Swans team. Too good. Just Sick joking. Oh. Carlton. Carlton, he's, he's, he's No, no, no. Sydney is the up. best team in 50 years. So uh, <laughs> no one's touching them. No. 
This was adverse conditions. It was a derby. Yep. It was an away game, essentially. Uh, they just went, that's cute. Bang. Yep. They were absolutely fantastic in this game to the point where, like, all the stats sort of backing it up. And as I said, was it 15 goals kicked with 11 different goal scorers, which is just fantastic stuff. Um, but Sydney now, all they do is, all they do is win, 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 <laughs> no matter what. That's it. They just win no matter what. And, like, that's the exact moment that you want to be – well, that's the exact mode you want to be in. Oh, yeah. As the best team and in the And they're, AFL. like, really confident. Papley's strutting around everywhere. So they've ripped off – how many games straight do you reckon they've scored over 100 points? Ooh. It's uh, five. <laughs> Don't oh, believe me. I was going to say, like, eight. <laughs> but before but, that, they had uh, – they've literally gone 98 points prior to that. Oh, and they've topped 100, 100 points in the vast majority of their games this season. It's fine. Even in – yeah. Wet conditions. It's chaos. They are the best team in the comp. Uh, and if you look at some of the stats from that game as well, like specifically the team stats, like it sort of doesn't seem to matter that they'll give up more possessions to the other team. Just yep. the way they clamp them and then the efficiency at which they sort of operate is just insane. 72.2% in efficiency inside 50 over 53%. Like that is just sick. Like they're awesome. They are. They are awesome. They're so, they're so good to watch. Awesome in the stoppages. Brody Grundy's just added just a completely different element to them. Yeah, they rule. Stats boy. Uh, I'm going Brisbane. They have their mojo back. We just talked up talked them up before. Their offense. I don't think anyone can beat their offense when they're firing. Four of the last five weeks, they've had over 30 scoring shots, which is just insane. They've kicked a lot of points, so if maybe they straighten up a little bit, but they've got 152, 126, 114, and 163. That's four of the last five weeks. They're just kicking massive scores. I'm just loving what I'm seeing from uh, from Brisbane, and they just they pretty much just sank all Port Adelaide fans, and they just were awesome. Yeah, their forward line's just firing. Everyone's kicking goals. You get a goal. Everyone get a goal. Love it. Honorable mention, my beloved Carlton. Yeah, that was great. Best on ground of the week. Who gets the cookies? Who Ooh. gets the biscuits? Who gets the orange slices? Who gets a free tune after the game? Whoa, whoa He's back. He kicked the goal and had 41. <laughs> he was incredible in that game. Amazingly enough, Patrick Cripps also had 41 touches. Yeah, some Shaw. of the best players. I like uh, Cripps really sort of going, yeah, another Brown, that would be good. Yes, He's I'm sneaking saying. up. Because I think we've now hit a bit of a point where you might actually see some of the Sydney dudes taking votes away from each other. Like you think about Chad Warner, you think about Isaac Heaney, Errol Goulden's like they're sort of throughout the year. Yeah, they're all going to be taking votes. Yeah. Probably just sort of nipping away to like yeah. each other's sort of vote. Like Heaney the, will still be right up there. But Heaney's yeah. been awesome, but yeah. like it's just the sheer volume, whereas like Cripps has just been awesome in like most of these games of the Blues. So yeah. I, he I was agree. incredible, but I think you were at that game. Well, that's the thing. I didn't notice. The 41. Yeah, I he didn't. He was just always there. There's lots of little handballs and the in and unders type Contested, stuff. I, off like, we go. At the game, I would have said Walsh had a better like overall game, but the fact Cripps got 41, I was like, no, he didn't. I thought he would have had like 28, but he was awesome. Walsh had a... Uh, Probably one of his better games in terms of like kicking efficiency and stuff like that, which is always nice to see. Uh, but Cripps had 27 handballs, 14 clearances. Crazy. And four hitouts because they also four used him as like the backup He's rocket the size time. of a ruck, yeah. See, that was a really interesting sort of thing that they did, right? So they had DeConing in the ruck and it's like, all right, we'll go pinch hat, pinch hit Cripps against like yeah. Blixabs and stuff, right? So yeah. you're like, sure, Michael Voss. But anyway, Cripps was incredible. What a game. Errol Goulden, absolutely unstoppable. They're the two best players I saw this week. Stats boy. Nice. Uh, I'm going just the signature Lockie Neal performance. 37 disposals, 10 clearances, 11 score involvements. He just did a bit of everything. I, I love watching him play when he's at his best. Didn't think he should have won. Was it, did he win the last Brownlow? Yes. Yeah, he shouldn't have won the last Brownlow, but that was a Brownlow-like wow. performance. Look at this. And, uh, yeah, absolutely love it. Fighting words from Stats oh, everyone, everyone would agree with me on that Lockie one. Lockie like, I'm not coming on your show now. <laughs> yeah, he was supposed to come on next week. Oh, damn it. You had him nah. booked and everything. Well, I'm talking <laughs> him up now anyway. He got best on, best on for me this week. He was absolutely awesome. And he's part of the reason. When he's at the, his best, everyone on the Brisbane side just gets up and about. When he's getting those clearances straight to Joey and straight to Eric, they're unstoppable. I feel like the Neil thing, though, the, the way that when he's firing, as long as, like, in tandem with Dunkley. Yes, so yes. Oh, good. That's why they got Dunkley, not just to rely exactly. on Neil. Like, yeah. Dunkley was yeah. just like, cool, Neil just got me the ball. Here comes another inside 50 <laughs> yeah. on your head. Top that. Suck in power. <laughs> yep. Love it. There you go. It's pretty good names there. Just a couple of uh, Brownlow winners and a future Brownlow winner. Maybe with Errol. Possibly, yeah. I don't know. It's they've just got so many good guys. They're so good. I know. It's like maybe <laughs> none of them will win a Brown though ever because they've got too many guys that could be could win a Brown. Yeah, just 
Maybe you said you should petition to go. Can we just like, oh, we'll just give it to everybody. Like, we'll like mate, their best and fairest race. race will be interesting, Sydney. Oh, mate, no mates. Who's got no mates this week? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's going to be Ken Hinckley, right? Like, this is going to be. I wanted to put him in here. Yeah. It's going to be the week of Ken Hinckley. Oh, should Ken go? It's like, they're not going to fire him mid season. They've already sort of come out and it said, like, that's not a thing that we're going to do. Uh, one of their assistant coaches is really, really highly regarded, and he'll be a future Port Adelaide head coach, basically. Yep. But 12 years on the job. That 152 points they gave up is the most they've ever given up. That is... Wait, ever? Ever. Really? Under Ken Hinckley. Under Ken Hinckley, yeah. Jeez. It's getting booed during the game when they showed <laughs> his face on the screen, getting booed after the game, copying abuse. It's not something that I'm usually just like, yeah, give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you deserve that. I part. don't think he quite deserves it. No. I think he's been a stalwart. I think he's a pretty good coach. But I do think... He stayed too long, though. I think there's tenure problems. Yeah. And I think you get a point where even someone like Kevin Sheedy just hangs around for, like, you know, a couple of years too long. Malthouse, for example. Malthouse, same sort of vibes. Pagan, maybe. But I don't know. He's been... Because he's never made a grand final. Like, never made a grand final in 12 years. And they had some really good teams. Awesome teams. They've made prelims, but they've never made a grand final. Yeah. It's definitely going to be a really tough week for Ken Hinckley. Simon Goodwin. Oh, mate, no, mates. He made the debutant the sub as well, oh. which is like not something that he apparently does. Uh, I so- understand it a little bit because, yeah, you got teams. You, you, if there's someone coming in, they're probably not going to be your best player. But your family's rocking up to the game. You got all your mates, and then they might not even get. It. I just hate it. it, should, it should, AFL should make a new rule because John Longmire did it as well. They're just both annoying. John Longmire is how good. You shouldn't be able to use. It. Yeah, so I'm agreeing with you on that one. Yeah, Kyden Brown came in, replaced Salem in the fourth quarter, and uh, it's just. It's such an old mate, no mate's vibe because you're like, dude, it's his first game. Other people will come out and go, oh, we don't remember some like the greats of the game's debuts. It's like, that's not the point. Yeah. It's like, this is I'm like sure the, he does. Yeah. This is the culmination of their career to this point. Yeah. They've made it. And you're like, nah, just go shit over Sit there. Sit on the bench for three and a half quarters. Until yeah. Christian Salem does a hammy. Until, like, come until on, someone man. like Petrarca gets hit by a truck. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of just, it sucks. I don't like it. To be honest, I just don't like the sub. In no, the sub should be. Sub it's so honest. Just put an extra person on the bench. And uh, Caden Cleary as well was your uh, debutant. Yeah. Uh, the Longmire came, brought in as a sub, right? So, yeah, same same vibe. Yeah. All right. That was my two. Stats <laughs> uh, I'm going Stephen May flopping. Not a good look from your leader, a leader of your side. When he's getting tackled, Eddie Ford is literally half his height, half his weight. Stephen May is one of the biggest guys in the, in the entire AFL. He's huge. Eddie Ford is only a bit bigger than me. He's tackled him. He's put his head, oh, I'm just going to do a little flop into the and get a free kick. Absolute joke from a uh, yeah, a leader of your team. And I, I don't think that's a good look if you're you're playing with him and you're like, oh, my, uh, one of my leaders on my team is just flopping everywhere. So, And he's going to get a fine apparently for it. So uh, good. <laughs> so it's a good point. Old mate, no mates is an interesting concept, right? Because it's like the rest so of your team would be yeah. like, what was that, Stephen, mate? Yeah. And he's going to punch him again. He's like, shut up or punch your head <laughs> yeah, in. You're like, fair oh, play. He's like, that's, that's I'm before. your mate again. <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah, all my no mates, just I had to get him in there against nice. North as well. Why I can't stand, stand, <laughs> We have stand. so many like rant uh, segments. <laughs> yeah, four umpires in the field and they keep screwing up really basic oh, stuff. Yeah. Uh, at least they got the, was it Charlie Cameron running all the way out of bounds, kicking towards goal in the uh, Port Brisbane game. It's like, yeah, you've got boundary umpires right there looking at him. They eventually called it back. You're like, all right, good. <laughs> but the Jeremy Cameron one was brutal. Yeah, just um, there was three or four other ones throughout the week. You're like, lots of throws. Lots of throws. Oh, lots throws. of just incorrect disposal gear. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to keep banging on about this. I just want them to get it right. Just do, it. Just do just your job. Just pull it the way. It, yeah, just do your job. That's all we ask on the <laughs> AFL Today Show. Just do your job. Yep. What can't you stand, Stats Boy? Oh, I only quickly touch on this because I already said it before, but just Bombers being third. I know a lot of Essendon fans uh, that are very excited. They've only beaten one team in the top 11. But they're still the best team in the uh, AFL in yeah, Sydney Division. Apparently they're the best team in the AFL. You can ask any Essendon fan that or Jim, apparently. Uh, yeah, so uh, I just can't stand that. Number one Essendon fan over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just saying, because they're unreal. Are you going to have to get a scarf that has Sydney, Carlton, and Essendon on I reckon. <laughs> That's one of those people that wear the orange jersey. Yeah, yeah I'll be like one of the mums in the <laughs> yeah, NFL. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> we actually had that the other day, didn't we? It was like um, the Dakotas. The Mackays. Oh, the Mackays. Dakotas, and they, it was yeah. like the, she had the, oh, she did. She yes. had the split jersey. I like, I like that. Yeah. It's like uh, yeah, you need, uh, you need a, three, a tri jersey or something like I that. I like it. <laughs> Good one. Super coach Wash, really quickly oh. from the end of, this, end of the round. What do we got? Tom DeConing, 176. Now, awesome. If you had been listening to a little official AFL Supercoach podcast, 
hosted by your mate Jim. I might have come up a couple of weeks ago. Oh, geez, Tom Ducati's pretty good port of difference. He's been getting one out of the room. Yeah, laughed out laugh? of the room. Oh, yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah. Here we are. He's been awesome. I love it. James Robottom rips off a hundred and diggity three. Love that. Awesome. Tom Green, he's back. He's back. I'm so glad. I, I a lot of that. people traded him out this week, and I was like, no, he's, he's a good player. Sucked in. I brought in Errol Gordon in place of Petrarca. Best move ever. He had nice. 151 this week. Uh, Lockie Neal has been absolutely pigging out. He's on 12% of teams now, Lockie Neal. Yeah, he's – And he started off really low. I don't low, know why so. – I never think about him. I think it was like 1% to 2% to start the season. Now it's up to 12. LDU with 148 yes. as well. He's up, been, been a little bit of a pod for me because, you know, people don't like picking too many North players. Sean Darcy finished with 147. Dunkley 144. Yo, 139. Zer at 135, same as Sam DeGone. Every good player just – Scored well this week. Brayshaw 134. This is so many scores over 130, but my favorite is probably the Hayden Young 130. Yes. I've, I've got him He's back. repaying the faith. I love that. Caleb Sarong, if you had him as your captain, yes. uh, 121. I'll take that. End. Not I'm bad. That was my pick on the show. Then I had switched to Gorn, so I cost myself. Back your, back your show I tips. I should back my <laughs> tips a little bit more. Uh, but I think – Everyone will have probably half decent weeks this week because a lot yeah, of the primos in Supercoach scored really well. I think I'm probably do about 2,100. So that's, yeah, that's what I got on the oh, 2,099. I was trying to get 2,100. I'll, nice I'll take that. But there you go. You can check out the official Supercoach podcast late tomorrow. Yes. But that's it. That'll do the AFL Today show for today. We'll be back on Wednesday for more AFL Today on Wednesday. That's the fun midweek madness show, probably with a guest. Better Ooh. check it out. Uh, thank you to Stats Boy for jumping on. Thank you. How good and easy these shows been without just like a loudmouth idiot. It is. I, we might have to. Uh, have to... <laughs> You've probably got one loudmouth idiot here. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a few still hanging around, but. Uh... <laughs> it's <just> weird, right? <laughs> I oh, it's, been, it's been good. Uh, either way, thank you for jumping on. And remember to smash a like for everybody else across the socials. You can see us doing lots of fun, weird, dumb stuff throughout the year. Face the IG, X, Threads, TikTok, of course, YouTube. You can also follow our other shows, Cricket Today podcast, Football Today podcast, NBA Australia, Hold All Tickets. Yeah, they're all pretty good. All like, great. subscribe, yep. star, or we'll send Stats Boy around to your house just to look at you through a window really weirdly. He, yeah. he won't do anything. You just stand there just like, <laughs> it's going to be weird. What? He always makes it weird. <laughs> all right, get around them all. I don't know, like Carlton fans booing Darren Milburn. Oh, Google that's that. a throwback, yeah. Google that. All right, that's it. We'll catch you later this week for more AFL today. Until then, look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.